This is your 20-minute podcast, where we do our best to give you useful information in 20 minutes or less. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Now, here's your host, David Brower. This is your 20-minute podcast with your host, David Brower, and our guest today is DePortia Rufus. Are you in Dallas by chance? Yes, I am. Lucky guess. <laughs> <laughs> I read your bio. It makes me sound smart. <laughs> you have the greatest laugh. Oh, my goodness. That's uh, infectious. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. DePortia is from Dallas, and uh, she was raised by a teenage mom. With the help of God, she started reading and writing at a young age, not knowing that one day she would help spread the love of Jesus Christ into all the earth through her pain and passion. And through her hardships, obviously, you've realized there's a bunch of beauty in the struggle, right? Amen, David. Amen. You know, life is life is what you make it, you know, and Life is unfair, but, but God is forever faithful. You know, we're going to all go through trying times in life, and sometimes it is unbearable. You know, sometimes you forget that the sun is sun is shining outside. I know I've had my moments. So, you know, but, but in the end, it, there, it's beauty, you know, and God always turns our ashes into beauty. Definitely a living witness of that. Good for you. And if if any of us were honest, uh, we would admit the same thing, but sometimes we choose not to be honest about those kinds of things, right? Yes. Oh, yes. And hide behind the mask. Yes. We'd rather keep the mask on. So you are author of uh, your book. Is that what it's called? Your book? Yes, it is. Your book okay. from God. Correct. All right. Uh, you're a radio co-host of the Diversity of the Minds Blog Talk Radio. You are a writer for Real Life, Real Faith Magazine. You are a theatrical actress for the Potter's House uh, in Dallas, where uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes uh, resides. Big fan of his. Oh, my gosh. Big fan He's of his. He's awesome, isn't he? Oh, I love him. I yeah. love him. Absolutely. I saw him years ago. It was a worldwide video conference, uh, spiritual leadership, global summit. That's what they called it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Global summit. And so I attended uh, attended one of those, and that was my first exposure to him. And I'm going, oh, that guy's the real deal, you know. Yeah, and, he is. <laughs> and now he's got his own TV show, and he's really touching a lot of lives. So. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Saving souls for Jesus, you know. That's, That's right. Well, tell me about your book. It says your book from God, but it has 366, not 365 right. uh, opportunities. So tell me about that. Yes, absolutely. So um, like you said, it's called uh, Your Book from God. And basically, it's a self-help daily devotional. It took me about four years to write it. Uh, I was in a very dark and desolate place a few years ago. Um, I had lost my job. Uh, my car I got repossessed. I had to move back in with my mom. And I was just going through a really tough time. And on top of that, my heart had just been shattered by a guy that I thought was the one I would spend all, the rest of my days with. You know, and um, I am someone that I don't, like, bit to people, like, you know, tell people all about problems. You know, I usually keep everything just, just bottled up inside. And writing right. is like a scapegoat for me. And I thank God for the gift of writing because um, when I was going through these trying times a few years ago, I would just write out my pain, you know, and that's what I did. I didn't know why I was writing. You know, I would just write how I felt from day to day. And then the Lord spoke to me one day. It was like, write a book. Now, mind you, I was going through all these, going through different trials and tests and uh, facing all types of tribulations during the time. And but I just kept writing and writing and writing, David, not knowing that eventually all of my pain and passion would turn into a book, which is uh, your book from God today. Wrote it from a place wow. of yeah, from a place of hopelessness, transparency, vulnerability. I was bitter at the time because I was just going through so much. I hated life itself. I cursed my own existence, and I even you know cursed God. Uh, you know, and I'm I'm not afraid to sure. admit that because I was just like. Why am I here? You know, my life sucks. There is no reason for me to be here. I just wanted to just end it all. And I remember countless times, David, where I would just pray that God would just put me out of my misery. You know, I would pray to just yep. 
kill me. This, I don't want to live anymore, you know. And But God had other plans, you know. And here I am, four or five years later, giving people hope because I know what it's like to be hopeless. I know what it's like to be numb. I know what it's like to just lay in your bed and just want to just die, you know. And, you know, our pain pushes us and propels us into our purpose, you know. And we all are passionate about something, and we can only find our passion when we realize that we have pain, you know. Pain teaches you things that yeah. joy can't, you know, and I, I thank God for my pain because now I'm I'm able to help people deal with their pain. I'm able to give people hope, you know, because I know what it's like to, to despair of life itself. When you're in that dark, deep, and I speak for my own personal experience as well, when you're in that really dark, I'm over it yes. kind of place, and you find this, you find this gift of being able to write how do you find the will to be transparent during all that? Well, I, I realized that when you're transparent and um, you're open, you're willing to be open with people and with yourselves, you, you, are, you identify with your true, authentic self. You know, when you hide behind a mask, you can't really reach out to people. You can't really um, let your light shine, you know. And being transparent helped me a lot because I was a person that, just always kept my feelings on the inside and kept my feelings in my pocket. But it takes a lot of strength, you know, to be courageous and to be open and honest with yourself. Because oftentimes, you know, we do hide behind shields and masks, you know, because it, it hurts to be transparent. But that's where your strength lies, you know, in the pain, in, in, your, um, in your place of darkness, in the trenches, you know, and in the valleys. No question. It helped me cope, you know, and helped me deal with a lot of things when I was just able to, to be free and just let it all out, you know. And that's what it's all about, just being free and willing to be open, you know, and willing to be able to relate to people because we're all, you know, bleeding in certain areas of our life. Yeah, we're all broken. There's no question about that. Yeah, right? we're all hurting, regardless of who you are and what your status is, how much money you have in your bank account. We're all hurting in some area, you yeah. know, and so when you started, when you started writing, I'm going to assume and tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to assume that it was therapeutic oh, yeah. to begin with, right? It was cathartic. It was therapeutic. It was you and the page. And that was it. Yes. Yes. Right. And then as you, as you became more and more honest with yourself and more and more authentic and and became more and more transparent to the page. When did when did you hear God say, Portia, come on, let's do a book here? When did it go from taking care of you to wanting to take care of others, I guess? Oh, that's a great question, David. So um, actually, I would just write and write and write, not knowing why, because I was just hurting. I just had to find a way to release my pain. And I wanted to do more than just write on sticky notes and write in tablets. So I actually started sending out little text messages here and there. Um, I would call them Portia Seeds of Hope, which is actually my nice. column in uh, Real Life, Real Faith magazine. It's really funny. And um, I would just send, like, everyone in my phone, just a few little messages of hope. I did that for a few years. And I would, you know, post it on my social media. I would get a few likes, a few shares here and there. But I realized that I wasn't reaching, you know, I wasn't, re I was being effective, but I wasn't, content with just texting, you know, sending out little text messages. Right. I wanted to reach right. more people. And so, you know, I had prayed about it. I was just like, God, why am I just writing? Why am I just doing this? Why am I just sending text messages out to people and inspiring them? I want to do more. You know, and I remember one day, I remember when God spoke to me, I was actually um, laying in bed at my mom's house, and that's when the Spirit spoke to me, and God was like, write a book. And I was just wow. like, huh? You know, I had to... I thought I had to clean out my ears because I was like, no way. How can I write a book and I can barely feed myself, you know? And, right. But, but when God, God has a plan for us all, you know, and I constantly, David, went back and forth with God. I was like, no, this, this cannot be so. You cannot be telling me to write a book and I can't even, I can barely even afford, you know, to do day-to-day -day things. You know, I can barely afford to take care of myself. But how right. can I write a book and do all of this and give people hope when I barely know who I am, you know? Wasn't it a great epiphany, for lack of a better term, when you decided not to be in control anymore? 
Yeah, because I was constantly, you know, battling with God, you know, going back and forth, and God wouldn't leave me alone about it. You know, when God has a plan for your life, it must be fulfilled. Regardless of how much you try to stray away or run away, God's word cannot return back unto him void, you know, and I constantly went back and forth. I mean, there was a time where it was like six months where I didn't even pick up a pen and write because I was like, no way. God cannot be telling me to write a book. Right. I was just so right. defiant. You know, I was like, no, this isn't for me. I, he can't be talking to me. You know, I constantly battled with him. But eventually, in the end, you know, God won, of course, because like I said, his will of must course. be done regardless if we agree with it or we like it or regardless of how far we try to stray away. His purpose must be fulfilled in our lives. Yeah, it's amazing what happens when we get out of the way. Yeah, we have to. You know, we have to decrease ourselves <laughs> so that he can increase. You know, and I got tired of God. Oh, well just, said. He was nagging me. If that's not to sound negative, but he wouldn't leave me alone about this book. Regardless of how yeah. much I didn't write, I refused to write or I didn't type or whatever. It, he was like, write the book every day. It would be so heavy on my spirit and on my mind. I couldn't break free from it. <laughs> That's awesome. So in your 366 uh, devotionals, are those Bible scriptures? Are they things you've written? Are they a combination? How does, that, how does your book work? Yeah, absolutely. So it consists of 366 days of inspiration. Uh, it's pay, uh, words of hope. Uh, there's poetry in there, and there are different prayers that touch different prayer points. So every day for 366 days, I discuss a different topic that, you know, we endure in life. I talk about pain, hopelessness, purpose, passion, running away from God's will, emotions, how to be stable. I really try to discuss everything that we endure as human beings on this human voyage called life. And for each day, there's either a Bible verse or like a quote from like a celebrity or a philosopher because I wanted to reach, you know, every all of God's children. Right. Not everyone believes in God, of course. Not everyone believes in Jesus. Not everyone reads the Bible or understands the Bible. So I wanted to use biblical uh, precepts as well as just, you know, quotes, so that I could be able to relate and to touch everyone, you know, because everyone believes. I'm assuming some of those quotes came from you, from your heart, right? Um. Well, yes. And, but a lot of the quotes are like from, because I talk about different topics. So whether, depending on that topic for the day, I would just find a quote that aligned with that text for that day, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So <laughs> your, your cross session of topics must be pretty vast. Oh, yes. Yes. I, like I said, David, I try to discuss everything that we endure. I mean, I talked about racism. I talked about the, how the enemy loves division. I I really tried to cover just everything that my little mind could think of. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, so there's definitely a variety. Everyone would be a, will be able to relate to this book. Titled it Your Book from God. <laughs> That's great. And 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 I love the hand on the cover. Oh yes, the the title. Yes, the book cover. Absolutely. Oh, because my you know, gosh. we're all God's children, you know, regardless I if know. we believe in him or not. Um, we we all need him. Yeah. You know, oftentimes we stray away from God and we think we can do life on our own, but in the end, it just doesn't it, it doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. Yep. No, because I've tried countless times to live life live my life without God. So your book has been out for absolutely. So your book's been out for four years. Oh no no! It just came out um in July. Okay. It took me about took four you about years. Four to years. Write. Okay. But it's, it's fairly new. It's about um. Maybe six months. Nice. I don't know. I'm probably doing my math wrong. So how can folks get the get a copy of your book? Yes, absolutely. So yes, guys, you can pick up your your book from God. Um, it's available on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. It's also available on Google Books and Christian Books. It does ship internationally. So it's available in the UK, Canada, um, Australia, and Asia right now. And it's, and it's just growing like crazy and It'll truly bless your spirit, you know, because we all need hope. You know, we, we're all trying to find our purpose, our reason for being. And I know that your book will be a guide that will definitely touch you and uplift your spirit for 366 days. So to have that kind of distribution in that short a period of time, that's 
not even remotely a coincidence. That's just remarkable. Amen. To God be the glory, David. Right. I thank right. him for it all. Right. Yep. You know? I couldn't have done it without him, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so your book is your book from God, 366 uh, devotions based on different topics, shipping all over the country, all over the world, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and different places. And what about your what about your website? How do people reach out to Deportia? Yes, yeah, so I'm actually working on my website. I had one up, but I didn't like it, so I have someone else uh, designing me a new website. Okay. I'm still under construction, um, but you could you guys could definitely uh, reach me on my social media pages. Um, my Facebook is um, the Porsche. I'll spell that. It's D A P O R S C H A Superfly, all one word, and that's Rufus which is my last name, R-U-F-U-S. My Twitter is at the Porsche, spelled the same way, underscore Rufus. And my Instagram is I am underscore the Porsche. Outstanding. And my website will be up in about uh, the next few days or in the next week or so. Okay. Well, by the time folks listen to this, your website will be up. And what's the what will be the, uh, the title of your website? How do folks find you on your uh, up-and-coming website? Yes, it'll be uh, drufus.com. Okay, easy. So drufus.com, yeah. that'll be, uh, <laughs> by the time this airs, that'll be live and and uh, all things great. So that's terrific, the Porsche. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your gifts with us and your story and, and getting that uh, book up there. Thanks for having me, David. And most importantly, happy 27th birthday. Thank you, thank you. Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, it's available in ebook and paperback. Okay. Got to mention that. Yeah. Kindle and Nook readers. If you ever need an audio book of it done, let me know. Oh, I've been trying. I've been thinking about that, but I don't know how to do that, you know. But wow. I'll, we'll definitely have to talk about that off air, or, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, continued blessings to you and your family. And um, it's really been a really been a treasure. Thank you so much. God bless you. <laughs> you too. You've been listening to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower and our special guest, to Portia Rufus. And don't forget, it's drufus.com uh, to check her out. And be sure to like us on Facebook or at facebook.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast. Until next time, don't forget to download your free audiobook at audibletrial.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast. That's audibletrial.com forward slash your 20-minute podcast for your free audiobook. And thanks for listening to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower.